four-man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh, no. Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five-man light bomb. They're going to follow up, and they're going to get one, two, three kills. And it's going to be everybody dying. Oh, my God. When does this happen? Everybody's dead. Good day. Welcome to another Nixus Gaming Series cast brought to you by me, the Lime Boss. In action, despite, well, all in all, I'll get a little bit over Shiri, maybe. Just, I know some people don't like me talking about this stuff, but the other day, dislocated my arm playing sports. So I'm going to see how this goes doing a replay with only um, one arm available to me, because I may actually be able to do a live one for once this afternoon, because, well, I'm off of work. I can't exactly work with only one arm, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, today we have Zul'jin Distillery facing off against Region Nebula in the Division C East Gas. For people who know me now know I do a lot of Division C games. It is my division, and I have kind of made it a personal goal to make sure a lot of Div C games get casted. It would be nice if... um. Other people casted Greg's games, my teams, but <laughs> we can't have it all sometimes, so I'll at least try to do it myself when I can. Anyway, we see here Zul'jin Distillery had banned out Braxis as well as Dragonshire. Yes, Dragonshire, that's what it's called. And then Regen Nebula banned out Volskaya Foundry and Towers of Doom, leading us to... Tomb of the Spider Queen. Well, I don't know who had picked the map or who had picked first pick. I specifically don't look so I can make sure I um, am surprised by the result. I don't know how the series is going to go, but I should hope that it goes well. But right, without too much more delay, let me slowly get my arm over into position to change it over so we'll get into the game. Oh yeah, this is slow. I am so slow going with this. <laughs> right, let's see how this goes today. So, on the left-hand side, we have DeWitt on the Blaze. Be Fresh on the Vala. Ankle Shot on... What's his name? Kalefus. Lid is on the Brightwing and Cowboy Kyle is on Leoric. And on the right hand side we have IT Cowboy on the Hogger. Murder on Joanna. Stixer I believe is on Jaina. Tashives is on Sylvanas and Rackham is on Rhaegar. I'm just going to mute myself for a quick moment while I check something so bear with me. And we are good. Wow this really is difficult with just one hand. Um, <laughs> So we see Ossian Renewal picked up. We see a little bit of scuffle happening at the beginning. In terms of stacking, we see fire at Will from Vala. Apparently she does not like Will very much and has decided to fire at him. We also see the general ability trade outs where we see Blizzard pushed on wave. We see Tashar's getting stunned by DeWitt actually. Murder stepping up quite aggressively. Other things to note is both Kalefus and Jaina are stacking globes with Mana Shield and Finger of Frost respectively. And those are kind of, oh, also Jaina's baseline Frostbite. So those are kind of the main stacking that we have to look out for this morning well this morning for me this afternoon for you guys i know it is just hitting 5 p.m for our eastern friends but unfortunately i am new zealand which is like plus 16 hours currently so yeah morning it is we see dewitt getting an excellent stun to shives really holding on we see aggressive vala an excellent haunting wave to get out and that will be a lot of abilities used to shives barely holding on but they did indeed hold on which at the end of the day, is just as important as anything else. Alright, we just see these waves getting cleared. We see... Is Region Nebula is carrying this a little bit slow, trying to make sure they do everything correctly. But meanwhile, we do see Vala is taking this bottom camp, the Siege Giants. And Red Team hasn't sniffed it out yet. Region Nebula is yet to figure that one out. But let's close that. So, yep. The early game for this map. Very much just rotation and clearing. And both teams have geared up a composition that lets them clear pretty well. Both teams can take camps pretty well. It will just be down... I think in all in all, these compositions lead themselves to be very close in how they want to be played. 
and how they need to be played to win. Both have decent wave clear, both macro very well, but both also have pretty large team fight potential. And that's what you want. It is online earlier for Zul'jin Distillery because they do have that arm engaged from Blaze early on. But once we see level 10's picked up, I imagine we're going to see Blessed Shield and then this really gets, um, this really becomes a barn burner as we're going to see some aggressive players from both sides. I'm going to quickly open up talent so we can see what's been picked. Subdue the main quest one where we can note here because I don't, I don't think anyone else has anything here from what I can recall. Right, we can see Regen Nebula is actually ahead on gems currently. Not by much. By a little bit, but not by much. But meanwhile, we see Sword and Distillery camp still up. Regen Nebula has been cleared, and we see DeWitt going on flick. Now gets charged onto the Joe, hitting Rhaegar at the same time. Alva Rackham and Murder looking relatively safe to side B Fresh, trying to pip him the whole time. To Shives going into awkward position, but they are still feeling relatively safe as there is a Joe kind of anchored in between them. DeWitt misses the charge. To Shives doing what damage they can. Uses Haunting Wave, however, gets Polymorph, so she isn't able to use it as escape. Has to now start running downwards. IT Cowboy going up to Peel. Does they... No, does they 7? Do they 7? Does he get the Q? Yes, indeed. To Shives gets to live. And that was almost a disaster for them. Right. We can see level 6. Blaze, you picked that level 4 real late, man. <laughs> to wit. Like, it's... It's already level 6. You're almost level 7, and you've just gone... Oh yeah, I have a level 4 talent. Whoops, my bad, guys. <laughs> Which, impressive that you waited this long, but you at least got there in the end. <laughs> nah, okay, if, I, if my ribbing does appear a little bit too much, just tell me and I will back off. Both teams now have a turn, and however, as we can see, 44, well, 44 gems already had in one side, 24 for the other, and Weave Weaver's not too far off. Sticks, it does manage to di dodge the charge to wit in a little bit of awkward situation, but without that um consistent lockdown that Blessed Shield provides. It's very hard for Murder just to kind of hold a tank in position for long enough to for the side of Region Nebula to keep him there. However, speaking of which, DeWitt gets an excellent charge off Rackham and Shives take a large amount of damage in the process, but will not go down. And we can see that Leoric had handed him bottom, and that will be the first Weber Weaver phase going over to the side of Region Nebula. Man, I wish I had, like, a second hand currently to do this, because... Having your arm in a sling, not fun, turns out. Uh, right, IT Cowboy does try to clear up that little bit of a wave before the Web Weaver's drop does actually hit the um, W on. Interesting to get W without Journeyman's cooking. In saying that, I do not really know Hogger well enough to know whether that's good or not, but we'll leave Hogger and Cowboy Cow to fire as we see Hogger spinning out. Meanwhile, looking top, we can do see uh, the side of Regen Nebula not looking at the best of uh, spots right now. A few of them a bit low. Rackham's trying to get the healing back up, but there won't be enough as Murder will go down. Hit by stun from Kalfus, followed up by Blaze Charge, and all the while Vala was peppering them at, through that. So we can see the side of Regen Nebula is doing their best to clear up this web weaver, but without Joanna there, they're all in danger if they decide to step back into it. We can see they're trying their best to clear it and will get it down now. However, that fort is as good as. Or, or so it's already over to Zul'jin. And we do see Tishives getting cleansed. We see him taking a lot of damage, and they will go down before Haunting Wave can go off. And that is another kill to the side of Zul'jin Distillery. So, while well, it took maybe five minutes for any kills to finally happen, now that they've happened, that's two kills, kills for Zul'jin. And, well, they now have that experience of experience advantage, and we'll see them get level 10s in just a few moments. Only top four is lost. That isn't terrible in this regard. We lost a bit of this mid gate. Only one tower. Well, we lost all the mid gate. We lost one tower in the gate here. Rackham is in danger. Does get hit by charge. To wit, trying to stay on top of him. There was follow up from ankle shot. That's Rackham stuck between the rock and the hard place. And it'll be them going down, going to a five man gank by the side of Zulu and Silly. Hogger does get hit in the tomb. However, thanks to that um, spin ability of his, Hog Wild, I believe it's called. Yes, Hog Wild. He is able to spin out of danger. And, well, fun thing about Hogwild, as well as Orphea Dash and a few other abilities, like Blink on Tracer, they could just go straight through the wall of, um, Entomb. Yeah, Entomb does not, the grave does not hold power of them. They can go out of any mausoleum, any grave. It will not stop them forever. Anyway, 
Second Web Weaver phase goes over to the side of Regen Nebula as we do see quest complete actually from Kalfus at the same time and Herox are online. We have Bunk from from Blaze. We actually see a team fight coming out, so I'm gonna talk about that later as we see a lot of abilities being pushed. There's a wailing arrow going out. That is actually a very low Vala. They will go down. And that is Angle Shot getting relatively low as well. DeWitt is getting charged off onto IT Cowboy. IT Cowboy trying to hold him in. And it looks like the team is decided to turn on DeWitt. DeWitt has to drop Bunker. However, as soon as they get out of that, that will be a very dead blaze. We see Ancestral is using IT Cowboy as they're getting a bit, a little bit too low. Cowboy Carl thought about going in on the flank, but then when actually there's a lot of pain there, not going to go that way. And as you can see, he's not even going to go in there. He backs out. And that fort is taken by Zildjian Distillery and actually gets two kills of their own in return. So we're getting some very good team fights, and as I said, level 10s is where this will likely become more interesting, because we do, that's an interesting too. As, as I say, as we do see, now that we have that consistent lockdown from the Joanna with Blessed Shield, that kind of engage, they are able to get those kills, those picks, as they are able to hold people for long enough. Because, okay, now we see both teams not quite having hand in, Six off four up, five off four the side of Zuljin, and about ten off for the side of Regen Nebula. So now we can see camps being taken by both sides. We can see the last of the gems getting collected and handed in as neither Cowboy Carl or do, well, any of these three want to really die with the gems. But I guess that's really the whole point of a map, not to die with gems and just hand them in forehead. And we can see now... Regent Nebula has hand in. They are in the process of doing so now, and it looks like Angle Shot will have not quite the last of them. B Fresh does, but all the while they're handing in. Regent's not going to be able to stop them. Dewick, Dewick gets hit by just one Jaina Q, but that will be the third we believe a phase going on the side of Zuljin Distillery. I like that they're pushing this top lane. They're wanting to get these web weavers as far down the lane as possible because. This is boss lane. If you can pressure keep now, you're in a pretty good spot if you get a decent wipe and can quickly do boss. Because this team can quickly do boss. Do it. Doesn't quite find charge. And now Stark doing rock and a hard place. Do get hit by one Stark. Do get hit by a second. Actually drops Bunker where the Blessed Shield comes out. So they will not be as killable as they were previously. We see Phase Shift comes out. Barely misses Rackham going around the corner. A little bit of Tokyo Drift. We see Brightwing trying to get out best of Cam. Wailing Arrow to not quite find them. However, Jaina will as she will complete her frostbite and she will get the kill onto the bright wing. Meanwhile, Hogger is clearing top. Hogger is just doing their duties, the offlane duties of just clearing where the team isn't. And to that we go, thank you offlaners. You're very appreciated. You're underappreciated in casting and in the game. You're just kind of there and expected to do your job. Do it barely for all shorts of sticks as sticks are trying their best to get the kill on them. We see a lot of damage coming out of him. Joe has to pop iron skin. Does nearly have Blessed Shield back up is the important thing to know. About 10 seconds off of that. We can see that Entomb comes out. Stixer does have to use Ice Block. Dodges all that damage with it. Just maximum timing. Joanna manages to complete Subdue. That is a ve very good bit of a complete. And Murder's holding on for dear life. But no, the Phoenix hit and the bomb will take them down at the end. We can see a double stun, meaning that Jaina will go down. So that is now a two for one. And Leork is almost back. We can see the team of... Zildjian Distillery just jumping in the bunker and just absolutely shredding that with the blazes, with a fire from the bunker. Right, so what are we going to get here from the side of Zildjian Distillery? They're getting clears. Just wave's been cleared up. We see Leoric is back and we're looking at a boss play. They don't quite have talent advantage, so I don't know how I feel about this, but we can, I guess they can see that the side of Regent Nebula is showing bottom. Oh god, big yawn, sorry. It's still morning and I'm tired. Bad sleeps. <laughs> Bad sleeps because of the pain in my shoulder, but in the end of the day it happens. And we can see boss now does go over to the side of Zildjian to sorry, much like I imagined how they would try and quickly sneak it out when there were one or two kills, and lo and behold they did. And now they're going to try to stop handing. They need to stop ID Cowboy. Lead does get here in time, drops Q, meaning they won't be able to get out to Wick. It's a nice double stun on the back line. And Tomb comes out onto Rackham and DeWitt. However, Rackham uses Ancestral, it's a little bit too early and they will go down. Hogger gets a nice stun coming out as we get Shockwave. Stun coming out to be fresh, however, phase shift means that they will... Well, I didn't think they were any really major da danger as it was, but phase shift comes out so they are able to live throughout, if anything did just happen to appear at any moment. 
Meanwhile, boss has been topi topping, pushing top, not topping push, this whole time. As we can see, a, a gate was found from it and about half the keep. So, all in all, Azulchen Distillery looks to be in a relatively commanding position currently. They have a lot of structures down. They have the kills onto the side of Regen Nebula. However, Regen Nebula does now have another Web Weaver phase, so maybe they can utilize this to kind of get back in the game. If they can get one fort, even two, that very much makes it dead even. So, hey, we'll see how this goes, but we will have them dropping just now. And it looks like that the side of Regen Nebula is wanting to commit to the top Web Weaver to kind of open up boss lane in return, maybe? I said something, and then we just going to go, ha, huh, no, idiot. That's what you get for saying things and predicting stuff. Slap. But we can see bottom Web Weaver's cleared. We can see the second one is already at half. We can see Lead and DeWitt being dropped down onto. Polymorph comes down to Hogger. We see the phase shift. I think they're just out of a range of... Yeah. I was going to say, I think they're out of a cha range of shield and shockwave, and they indeed were. Lead now holding... Wanting to push in, but murder an IT Cowboy, making sure that no one can get back in. Actually, excellent swing by IT Cowboy, meaning that DeWitt wasn't able to actually hit the stun. Zeta Shives gets out. This Web Weaver is still at about a third health, but I don't think it will outlast the keep. It actually may go down at relatively the same time, which surprisingly so. It looks like we may be getting a big fight coming out in just a few moments. As IT Cowboy does spin in, we do see that Blessed Shield going down. Brightwing loses most of her health before she can even move, and because of Wailing Arrow, they weren't able to face shift out. Meanwhile, we see the Hogger going down, dropping 24 gems, and no one's able to step back into it. Murder trying their best to get out, slowing down the rest of the side. However, DeWitt gets rooted. I was going to say DeWitt hits a sub, but no, they got rooted for their efforts. Sticks and Rack and barely holding on. We see the Totem being dropped. I think it's Earth Grass Totem, but no, that is... Unfortunately, not enough to stop the on <laughs> oncoming tide that is Zulchin Distillery as they take out Jaina in the process. And that will be another triple, yeah, triple kill. Well, three for one, I guess, for Zulchin Distillery. They don't quite have hand -ins, probably an important thing to know. They are a fair few, actually. They're four off, one off. They just get one last gem and they've got it. So we do see Zulchin Distillery has hand in. A few members of the side of Region Nebula are still down, but they want to get camp first and then maybe get it out. Just so they can have a very big push mid as well as that already weakened top will get pushed into as well. However, by this point, most of the team members... I guess, to be fair, once by the time you summon the Web Weavers, by the time they get down the lane and they drop, you probably have the opposition up anyways. Region Nebula would still already be up. We see a stun coming out of Hogger. Hogger then Polymorph. We do see Shockwave, meaning they are able to Hog spin out. However, they aren't fully up. They do have move speed, meaning they are able to kind of keep running, keep running, and despite the efforts of Zildjian Distillery, IT Cowboy gets to live another day. DeWitt hits a stun onto the gate. We see Unstop coming out onto by the Rhaegar. And actually, Cowboy Carl's the first one to go down. So Shard's actually getting relatively low as well. As you see, there is a lot of ults already used. Ancestral is just about back up. Murder just has to hold on a little bit longer. We can see Rackham trying. There comes the Ancestral and does come out. The Iron Skin keeping them alive for long enough. To Shives blinks into an awkward situation. Getting chased by Beefresh and DeWitt and will actually go down. That haunting wave was the end of them. You can see, meanwhile, level 20s are now through for the side of Zul'jin Distillery. Altoy Cowboy once again cancelling the charge from Blaze. As Blaze has actually been... They've been pretty odd to that ch charge as they've been managing to cancel every time. Murder, however, getting relatively low. We see the, it's even the Living Bomb getting them low enough. We see the Flamethrower on that upgrade trying to keep them down, but no. Murder manages to hold on mounts before Cowboy Carl can respawn as they're not quite want to go down to that. Other things not, we have Buried Alive from Leoric. We have Blink Heal, uh, Invisible Friends, Brightwing. And there is that Buried Alive coming out. Jaina can't ice block that. However, DeWitt barely falls short with his stun. Sticks are holding on to the alive. Rack him, trying to keep him up there. Cowboy Carl chases him in, but they will get to hold on. Wizard Shield comes out, and we do see that is the Vala going down as Wizard Shield held him in that tower range. Brightwing, Brightwing Face Shift cannot come up in time. I think not. We have Far Fight Quiver coming out now, is but they're dead because something can't get going. And Murder's holding on to the alive. That E build doing so much the same. I2 Cowboy appears in the back line, gets a nice stun. Does unstop just before they can get, just before the kill came out. Cowboy Carl goes down at the same time as IT Cowboy. 
Do we really have two? I need to do this. Do we really have two cowboys playing the off? We do have two cowboys playing the offlaners. <laughs> nice. That's what I love to see. Good old yeehaw energy. <laughs> but right, her, uh, storm talents are now found by Regi Nebula as well. So let's have a quick cap of uh, what else we picked. Because one thing I missed from the side of Zuljan Distillery is fortified bunker by Blaze. Otherwise, we have Radiating Faith. Yep, Radiating Faith by Joanna. Bolt of the Storm, Sylvanas, because she's been in a little bit of a sticky situation quite a few times. Hogra is thinking currently about it. Farsi is blessing from Rhaegar. Water Elemental, Jaina, and a very dead Brightwing. It is indeed High Noon in the offlane, but which Gunslinger has the quicker hands? Which Gunslinger has the better gun? We'll find out, at least in this map, where it's going, but we won't know for the series, at least for another one, maybe two maps. Also, hi to Wit and Silverbelt. I hope you're doing well this evening. At least better than I am. Because, <laughs> uh, turns out, casting with one arm and a sling, maybe not the easiest, but definitely doable. It's definitely easier than playing the game, especially because I can't be bothered remapping all my mouse, all my keyboard buttons to my mouse. Uh, that sounds like effort, and I am inherently lazy. But we do see Hogger's clearing bot lane. And this is the third Web Weaver phase for the side of Regen Nebula. However, they are... This is very much feels like damage control more than anything else by Regen Nebula with these Web Weavers. However, we see Murder manages to get onto the backline, be fresh, and Cowboy Cowboy in a lot of danger. However, excellent stop by it, and that actually means Jaina will go down right as she comes out of Ice Block. We see the Ancestry Healing coming to Rack and Rack and holding on for dear life as both hits already down. 300 health left from them. Actually, the Leorok's coming down now. Then we see Rhaegar being followed to Whip, finding the Q side on them. Murder. Murder barely holds on, 90 health, all in all. And then we see that is Sylvanas going down. IT Cowboy trying to escape. They have beaten Cowboy Cow this time, but I don't know if they will get to win. Well, they've won the battle. I don't know if they get to win the war as they do back out safely, fortunately enough. Meanwhile, we see bottom where Weaver is still going at about half health. Top where Weaver just has gone down now. IT Cowboy hitting lead, just slowly, actually that auto attack's pretty chunky. Are we the auto attack quest? No. It is just, it's just inherently that strong. Yeah, 342 for auto attack, man, that's actually a lot. Right. There we go. And we can see another boss play is happening by the side of Zul'jin Distillery. No, yeah, just because for their Brightwing. Brightwing is face shift, so they're anywhere they need to be. But with Brightwing there, I guess the, the side of Regen Nebula is not actually going to smell out that this is happening. Cowboy Carl, however, does have a tomb if need be to kind of stop people down. Murder scouts at Cowboy Carl's there, but it is too late as boss has been picked up. And I imagine we're going to see a relatively strong push with this boss. Right. DeWitt uses charge, doesn't quite find anything there. Jaina, however, does find a lot of damage in the process, and actually that's a lot of damage. It's actually, that's a double kill for Sylvanas. Both Leoric and Brightwing going down at that very moment. DeWitt managed to drop Bunker, sure, but there's still a lot of damage coming out. Rackham stops spreading, but Rackham, you killed for building with bomb. Look what you've done. <laughs> no, but we do see a relatively healthy boss. It won't get crew core by any means. The side of... Regent Nebula have a lot of tools to melt through it. We can see it is already at, well, when it was at two thirds, it got to the core. It's basically gone before the shield could even get half off. Meanwhile, we see IT Cowboy in a little bit danger. We do see a nice double sun. However, that will still be them going down. Unfortunately, one cowboy cannot take on the world, as that is yet another cowboy going down. God, people just don't like cowboys this game, huh? What are the cowboys at in terms of deaths? 5 for the Leoric. Cowboy Kyle not doing too hot. I say 5, but we do. Yep, we're going to see a lot of damage coming out, and that's a 6 coming out. I'm so sorry, Kyle. <laughs> that was very unfortunate timing for me to point that out. 6, that is. And actually, relatively even deaths across the board from the side of, uh, from the side of Region Nebula. Each of them have died 3 times, so let's have a look at, keep an eye on those stats, see what's happening. Because we can see Kalfus has done a lot of damage this game. Quite a bit more than their counterpart of Vala, but meanwhile we do see that Jaina and Sylvanas are basically neck and neck. 0.4k difference between them. But we just see that 
Regent Nebula is constantly under this pressure by the waves pushing into him. We can see that there is this cata pressure that they just don't have in return, just because top bot both well top mid bot they're li missing all their keeps, all their forts, all their structures, and meanwhile from the side of Zuljin, just really they have top and bot still as said in the wrong order, clicking on things. So they will have those camps, so they will have that constant shield up pressure. So while Murders did engage on one side of the fight, we do see DeWitt's engage on the other. We see an early Ancestry coming out, Rackham staying up he healthy, however. We do see Murders trying to be best of best. Cowboy Carl going down once again. DeWitt has to drop Bunker to make sure they don't die. Murder is going after B Fresh and Lead. DeWitt being held in place. And actually, there'll be DeWitt going down, followed soon after by the Joanna. So it's two for one currently. Ankle shot now in danger. We see IT Cowboy does get a hit on them. However, the invisible means that they won't be able to do anything for a little bit more of it. However, there goes the Kalefus. And are we going to get an end call here? We have three down. You still have a front line, albeit you are missing your Joanna. You do still have a camp mid. Yep, we. I think we are going to see an end call. And Cowboy Carl doing their best to drain hope to come back up. Right. Blue team's core is under attack, as you can see here by the Spider Queen. I can't remember what her actual name is, but we do have a decent amount of pressure already coming out. Meanwhile, that camp's already cleared. IT Cowboy also losing the health relatively quickly. There'll be Vim going down. That's not what the timing you want to see. As we see a double in turn from Leoric, as that is a double kill now, and that what looks like could be an end by the side of Regen Nebula. Quickly becomes, oh no, actually, it could be Zuljin Distillery who can end. As there is no one, oh actually, Joanna's up in eight seconds. They can at least clear things out, but by no means will that be an end call from either side, but no, we do still get an end call by the side of R Zildjian Distillery, maybe? We can see Vala's at least going for it. Oh, Murder Rip Shield. Just let it rip. Oh my god, Vala's actually taking a lot of damage so far, but does start running away. We can see Brightwing Phase Shift coming up, meaning that they are fine now. And how is Murder going to be held with a hold on? Oh, I've clicked the wrong button. For 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Answer unlikely as we do see there is the entomb coming out they're quickly losing health and that will be them barely holding on actually but i don't think core will be able to hold on in the meantime iron skin popped we do see q coming out we see actually hog is back we do see a nice double sun coming out but there's three and there's two in bunker that's now everyone back from the side of zultan distillery and unfortunately for the respawns of region nebula they're just a little bit too late as ggs are called as zultan distillery takes the first map very close by the end, but I did say this one looks like it'd be a close one. Both teams had very much the same styles of composition that they were wanting to run, as they do have great wave clear, but both had very good team fights, and we can see that time and time again. Both teams fought very well. Right, let me slowly click around and jump on over to my, uh, my poor arm. Right, let me, <laughs> sorry, everything takes like so long, just because, again, dislocated shoulder, and now I've got to figure out where I'm clicking, and I can't just alt-tab with my left hand, then click with my right, I've got to like awkwardly reach over my right hand, and then click with my left, etc, etc, right, there's my game summary screen, excellent. So let's have a look at stats to start. As I, as I was saying throughout the game, relatively even, four kill difference, and that was just that last wipe at the end. And unfortunately, it does sometimes come to a last wipe at the end. But we can see Brightwing, Rhaegar, very close healing. We can see Soak, Leoric, Hogger, very close Soak. However, Le Hogger did have a fair bit mount more Siege fan. Leoric, just because Kael'thas also picked up a lot of it. But that's neither here nor there. In terms of damage, Vala, Kael'thas, Jaina, all relatively close. Same Sylvanas, not too far off him either. So yeah, all in all, the stats kind of echoing each other just a step off each time. I do like how even they've managed to get the deaths by our uh, region Nebula. Though. This is nice. Just a bunch of fours. Like, well done. Uh, looking at talents, anything that stands out to me, or at least anything that I can tell. Uh, interesting to see the creepy hand build from Leoric, that Drain Hope build. It's not as popular just because it's the most um, skill shot dependent. It can be very strong in the right situations. But you typically see um, either... Auto attack, uh, Wraith Walk build, or auto attack build, I should say. I know auto attack build, definitely more popular in the lower divisions, just because it is extra damage, and Wraith Walk build does just so much as well to hold things out. Right, so without much more, let me 
jump it on, oh gosh, alt tab, jump it on over to the map view screen as I click this button here. Oh, things are so difficult. <laughs> click replay, as we can see, oh god. <laughs> oh, this is difficult, difficult, lemon difficult, man. Oh, uh, as we can see, Tomb of Spider Queen was won by Zildjian Distillery, and then we have... Infernal Shrines. Infernal Shrines. My personal foe of this season is I'm going to open up that map. I'm not going to tab into the game yet, because I will need to just tab it on over in just a few moments. Just spinning my head like, yeah, let's go. Right. I'm going to click it, like, just before, like, it loads in properly so it doesn't auto-tab me in. Now. Damn it, auto-tab me in. Too late. <laughs> right, let's change it on over. And let's start. Right, now we're changing on over. Let's start with Sardis. Ooh, no. Reaching Nebula this time. As we have Murder back on Joanna. Tishives is on the Lunara. Sticks it on Junkrat. Oh, I do love a good Junkrat. We do see Rackham is on... Stukov, which I imagine we're going to see Silence Field, and IT Cowboy is on Blaze. Okay, nice off lane Blaze. On the other hand, we have Cowboy Kyle, so once again, we're having a nice showdown. This time, Cowboy Kyle is on the Diva. B Fresh is on the... I went in my head, pew, 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 pew. Tychus. Lead is on my personal favorite of Ufa, so I may have a little bias coming into this one. I do maybe want the Ufa to win, but I'll try to cast on bias at least. DeWitt is on ETC, and oh, we may see a holy cow. And Ankle Shot is on Kalefus once again. And we actually have a pretty rough CC chain. It is the easiest way to put this. Because if either Ankle Shot, DeWitt, or Lead can get a stun, that is going to be four, five seconds of stun. And if B Fresh is in position to use a minigun, that should be anyone dying. Speaking of which, we do see Tashives going down as first kill goes over to the side of Zildjian Distillery. So, we can see what the oh, very obvious um, fight is here for Zildjian Distillery. They want to fight. They can fight. Boy howdy, they love the team fight. But I do think when we get to objectives, the objectives may fa favor Regen Nebula, as we do have a lot of zonal control. We do have, as I say that, but we have Kalfus Bomb, so we do have Junkrat Mines. We do have Joanna, just very good wall. <laughs> a very good wall. We have Rackham with that Silence Ball. So yeah, we have a lot of very good tools to hold an objective, to hold an area. But if someone gets picked out by either DeWitt, Ankle Shot, or Led on their free heroes, any of their free heroes, that's going to be something very hard for Regen Nebula to come back from, especially if they do just get that quick pick and it is just that going to happen. Right, let's have a look at talents now that we're here. You can see Prog Rock ETC, we have Kael'thas going Mana Shield, as well as Uther going Wave of Light, that kind of what I consider as the main heal build from Uther. Stacking on the other side, no, but we do see that it is going to be Junkrat with that... I can't remember what the sound's called. Extra wild timers. We can do see now that the side of Resolution Siri stepping in. We do see B Fresh has actually launched off the point. Thank you to that junk rat mine. We see, unfortunately, yes, Uther was a little bit stuck going around around circles. We do see Lunara going down to trade for Uther, but Uther at least still has a little bit of value while they are dead while their respawn timer is rolling. So they do keep Ankle Shot healthy enough to um, dissuade the side of Regen Nebula to chase after them. Right, level fours are up for both sides. One good spread from Rackham, okay. Crowd surf, oh yeah, let's go. I love a good crowd surfer. I, l okay. ETC is like one of the few tanks I've been playing. I hate playing tank, I am bad at tank. My ping does not allow me to play at least two or three tanks. But ETC is one of the ones I enjoy. And man, I love crowd surf <laughs> so damn much. But other thing, the other major thing I want to note here, despite it not being stacking, is we have Trap Build Junkrat, which you see is very much going to lean into the style of, okay, we want the objectives, we are going to hold that objective point, and Junkrat Trap allows you to do so. Okay, Master Assassin from Tychus is going to be the other thing I need to point out. Oh, want to point out, and Subdue from Joe. Right, keep all the stacking coming in late. Nice side from Do It. Do It. Decent amount of damage coming up for B Fresh as well to murder, but we can see that, yep, the side of Regen Nebula has set up. It's going to be a hard, bit harder for them to step in, well, a bit harder for the side of Tilting to step in. Meanwhile, DeWitt kind of 
making me sound dumb there, sliding straight through Joanna. And we can see even the stun train came out because B Fresh was in position. That is being down. And it also looks like the, the duel between IT Cowboy and I'm just gonna notice now the duel between IT Cowboy and Cowboy Carl's been pretty even so far. Rack and Ben get slid, pushes into position, and that will be them going down. As I see it, if like yeah, sure. Regen Nebula has a very good like objective control. But if the side of Zildjian Distillery are able to dislodge even one person with their CC chain, more often than not, that will be someone from Zildjian, Dis uh, someone from Regen Nebula going down, and that would usually, that in this case, has led to the objective being in favour of Zildjian Distillery. So while the last game was relatively even in the early game, this game, early, this early game definitely seems to be over to the favour of Zildjian Distillery. However, I wouldn't say that it necessarily will stay like this forever, because once again, when tens come online, Joanna is wet, where her like big power spike is. Dewitt pushed back into the keep. However, the keep itself is not frozen, but Dewitt somehow didn't take danger throughout all of it, damage throughout all of that. They're trying to hold on. They do get out, and we see Chup now hitting Rackham and Stixer. They're both trying to hold on. Nice stun onto Murder. To Shives hits that burst heal from that choking pollen. Was ch choking spores? Yeah, choking pollen. As you can do, see, that was him. Well, first V. Tychus, I'm just making hand movements, like gesturing, like what a gun would be, like. Just Tychus, just doing it. And I'm like, yep, okay, yep, that's how he works. Cool, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. And meanwhile, I should mention that while this fight's been happening, Diva's just been shoving top. Cowboy Carl was winning the lane. His six shooter is going, but it looks like IT Cowboy is coming up with a pistol of his own. We do see a stun coming out onto Cowboy Carl. Cowboy Carl actually taking a lot of damage before, and that will be Mick going down. Meanwhile, we see Uther goes down bottom as Tashai's manages to find a kill onto them. Because probably a thing to note, Uther, good at burst healing. Pretty good at burst healing. Very good stun. Pretty good burst healing. Uh, against someone such as Lunara, who does nothing but sustain damage. Like, the most sustained of sta sustained damage. Uther struggles. And we can see that, well, she realizes this and was able to get that pick onto Ufa. Heroics through basically, basically at the same time for both sides. I already have it open, don't know why I'm closing it. So we can see, let's go by the side of Regen Nebula first, because I think they did hit it a bit f faster. We have Wizard Shield, Joanna, we have Bunker Drop from Blaze. Flailing swipes, mm -hmm. I was like, Ufa about to get stunned? No. Flailing swipes on the Stukov, Junkrat, Reptire. And Fallen with Vine on the... Oh, that was a minion. Heck, that minion in particular. As to say, Fallen with Vine's on the Lunara. Meanwhile, other sides, we have that Holy Cow combo. We have <laughs> Deathmosh ETC, as well as Divine Shield on Ufa. Phoenix on Kalphus once again. And this is where the objective fight of Zildjian Celery gets even better. As we do see Commandeer Odin by Tychus. And rounding out the heroics... We have Micro Missiles by Cowboy Cow on the Diva, which will make this fight actually much more even. Just because we do see now that she'll have a decent bit of range burst outside of Pilotful. And she's let, yeah, you can see, that's a lot of I two Cowboys got health gone. Just that one moment, you see da 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 da, and it just goes. Murder does get a stun onto there. That was a junk crat trap as well. There's a, oh, I was gonna say, there it is, there's it, holy cow. But no, Rackham barely out of the Mosh range, and that will be them holding, them flailing swipe the ETC out. And because of that, ETC actually went down, and also to note that Diva Mech went down top as well. So what was looking very rough in the early game for Regen Nebula, they're now getting a lot of damage off, and we can see Riptide does get a little bit juked by D Fresh. B Fresh, however, does have Riptide directly on top of them, and that will be them going down. Yeah, but... I think that what essentially RT Cowboy has been doing is bl between Blaze Charge as well as his Q talent, if you hit the crossfire of hitting both streams at once, there's a lot of damage. But as I can see, Cowboy Cow does have a lot of damage of their own. So Rackham doesn't quite find that slow, doesn't find the silence, and that will be Cowboy Cow backing out to safety. Next objective up, we do indeed have a Mortar Punisher. So, this should be. Oh, excuse me, I just need a cough. Sorry about that. Water Punisher does quite a bit of damage to structures, does quite a bit of damage to heroes. 
and we do have that objective fight coming up for Zildjian Distillery. If they can just hold it, they're in a pretty good spot. Diva Bomb didn't actually get the most minions there. We can now see that actually Icy Cowboy in a lot of danger. Does have to drop Bunker. We can see them getting out because of it. Bunker, a very good tool for actually escaping that issue. Also, hi Rock, I hope you're doing well. And yeah, Diva Bomb's great for objective, but just didn't quite find its mark there. DeWitt holding into a safe spot. And actually, we see the big traps picked, which makes sense on objectives. The minions can eat it. You want those big chasing traps to spite uh, instead of the double trap they usually see on a lot of objectives. Right, we do see Cowboy Guile getting relatively low. DeWitt holding on as well. I say relatively low. It's a diva. They have pilot form. DeWitt is just fighting all the bear traps under the sun. Does find a stand onto Rackham, however. Meanwhile, Lead is the one in danger. That burst coming out from Lanaro means they will go down. That was the weirdest we've ever seen Lunar, but we're going to ignore it. Meanwhile, Cowboy Kyle and DeWitt get set by the slowing swipes. Cowboy Kyle barely holding on. That silence does a lot of damage, but not quite enough to get through their health. And yeah, this is kind of coming up, as I said, with the objective kind of comp that the, the kind of clumping objective comp that Regen Nebula has, it's very hard for Zuljin Distillery to find a pick once their fight's fully gone down. Zuljin Distillery needs to get to objectives first, so they can pick off someone as it is happening. Right, meanwhile, let's see, we have that fort being slowly pushed down, 13 through both sides, so I'm going to open up talent so we can have just a quick peek of that. I've been seeing this oil quest on Blaze more and more as things are coming along. Just for that longer, that longer um, ignite time as well as for more damage on it. So we're moving away from the stun build that you see typically in offlane blaze and moving towards a kind of more I'm going to throw out a lot of oil and it's all going to be on fire all the time kind of style of build. DeWitt is in position looking like they're wanting to get a sick mosh. We do see a W coming out. And actually, that will be Mosh back up. I don't know if it's up already, but at least Mosh is up now. And I think the other team of Region Nebula will be expecting it as well. But only time will tell how that actually goes. Murder barely. Oh, I was just saying Murder barely out of range. Nope, that's one stun, that's two stun, that's three stun, that's blue stun, that's red stun, and that is them out. That's, yeah, that just, that just happens. Sometimes you're Joanna thinking you're safe. And then you're CC'd for about 10 years, and you're dead. But yeah, that's kind of as I expected. <coughs> Outside of the objective fights, it is going to be a struggle for Region Nebula. And you can see here that it's kind of pulling out fruition. If one stun's found by Zuljin Sillery outside of an objective, if there is some loose rotation, that person will typically die. And we saw that happen to Joanna. Joanna there. Poor Joanna, poor boy Joanna. Just... I love myself a good, a good Joanna. I'm not going to tell further into that because that was about to get like strange, but not the strangest thing you hear on a stream. Right, we do see a fight is about to come out. We see I2 Cowboy getting a hit on to DeWitt. De DeWitt, however, using that W to push him out of danger. Then it comes D Shield. We do see Lead is in danger. Lead gets hit by Blade Stun. There'll be Vim going down to Lunara once again. Lunara's really got. Oof is number this game. Oof is just not having a fun time with all these poisons hanging about. But as I said, it's a struggle for Oofa. But, okay. Zul'jin destroyed got bottom camp. Region Nebula went, okay, we got a kill on yours. We're taking your camp now instead. How about that? And really, there's no response from Zul'jin Distillery as 16 advantage is now in favor of Region Nebula. We see Murder stepping in. Blessed Shield was used. Another W was used. We can see that, oh... Murder was not quite able to find it. Stixer didn't quite get the W over in time. They weren't able to concussion mine them back. And now Stixer's are through for the side of Zildjian Distillery. Camp being cleared. B Fresh is still in their job. Just hitting the minions, hitting the impalers. Just going da 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 da. Slowly taking it down. We can see now we're going to have another LSU in fight. And good. I see Benediction. I am happy. I am a simple man. CB in addiction, am happy. IT Cowboy out of position, doesn't have an escape if they are collapsed upon. Does need to use charge, which probably won't save your life, because if they got hit by a uh, ETC charge, if they got hit by any sort of stun, they were dead. They didn't have a, I don't think at the time they had the mana for bunker. I don't think they had, they barely had the mana for charge, I believe. So all in all, that was a risky place for him to be, especially with his low resources as Blaze had. 
This time we do see an arcane punisher, and as I said, we're gonna need to see Zulgin Distillery on the objective first, because it's gonna be a little bit harder for Reaching Nebula to push in. And we may see how that works out this time as Zulgin Distillery went first. We do see that is a lot of damage coming out, however, that is a miss by, I was gonna say, miss by Joanna's shield. ETC goes down, that holy cow combo didn't quite work out. We do see Bunker being dropped, Blaze holding on, didn't quite need to drop it there, but best be safe and sorry, as the old proverb goes. But well, keep in mind that the side of Region Nebula has all five up. Zulgin Distillery, however, only need four of, of these minions. Only need one of these minions. We do see Diva Mech getting relatively low, it doesn't go down, but we do see Arcane Punisher is going over the side of Zulgin Distillery. But they are missing the ETC, so may want the Diva with him. No, Diva just goes to. Oh, no, Diva's back. Oh, Rackham gets jumped. Yep, there's a stun, there's a stun, there's a death. But yeah, Punish. Without an ETC, a Punisher is also still a pretty good combo piece for your uh, stun train, let's say. And Rackham, unfortunately, doesn't have the most health of all the heroes, even all the healers. There are a few healthier, such as Ufa. And that will mean now that the objective is kind of going to just have a free push. Oh, maybe not the freest of pushes, as we do see Blessed Shield coming out. However, we see Ankle Shot is pulled out of range of a Junkrat Trap, even if it armed in time. Oh, and Lunara is actually found by the um, Punisher itself. Disaster. Absolute disaster. And meanwhile, we can see a thought of the side of... I'm just watching this Punisher go into Narnia. So, mid fort, bottom fort stays up. Punisher does get a little bit of damage on the gate. We also saw top fort go down as well, I believe. Yeah, we also see mid fort go down. Murder holding on to it best they can. IT Cowboy realizing we don't have the best of situations. Does decide to back out a little bit. To wit, driving an excellent wedge between the two parts of Region Nebula. Sticks in danger. Does use the Junkrat mine to get out. Very good use of it. You do not want to go down there. Let's see what is going to happen at this fight. It's not going to close again. As we see a double stun coming out onto the from the from Joanna, we do however see Mosh down bottom. It's a little bit of split focus. Sticks it up. We zoom in, see Murder dropping the shield. To wit now in a dangerous situation. Does get Junkrat Mind over wall, so that will be basically them out of this fight. Nope, they actually. Never mind. I forgot about it. I forgot about the crowd surfers. That is an EGC suddenly over wall. And that is two kills for the side of Sultan Distillery for the one D mech from the side of Regen Nebula. I love Crowd Surfer. I love Crowd Surfer for that reason. Murder acknowledges it. Fit Crowd Surfer in your games. It's a fun talent that lets you do that. Because <laughs> without it, DeWitt was basically screwed. I forgot about it even after talking it up for the better part of a minute around level 4. <laughs> but there we go. That's another thought down for the side of Zulgin Distillery. And Storm Talent's approaching for both teams. What was looking like is going to be ahead first for Zul'jin Distillery, uh, Region Nebula, now is in favour of Zul'jin Distillery, as it will only just come into maybe the next 30 seconds or so. Yeah, this camp will get it, likely. I keep seeing, like, things move outside my door. I, I'm just about to go off here. Like, for, for front our front door is glass, like, I can see it from rear off in my computer. It's, it's like, see things move my, oh yeah, it's just a tree. Unnecessarily paranoid, that's my middle name. Right, let's have a look at talents as for the Storm Talents for the side of Re uh, Zulgin Distillery. We see Death Metal picked up by ETC. Or is it Death Marsh? Yeah, Death Metal picked up. Micro Missile upgrade. I don't know what this is called. Timing Attack from. I don't know what half talents are called, actually, apparently. Timing Attack Diva. Redemption Ufa. Flamethrower Kalfus. Tykus is thinking about it. Tykus picked up Running Gun. Speaking of Running Gun, we do actually see IT Cowboy in danger. As they wanted to run away, they just have Burn Notice. Burn Notice won't save him. They give a charge out. They're trying their best to hold on to Wit staying on top of him. There's Ufa stun. There is another Ufa stun that'll be them going down. Over the meantime, Diva's about to lose Mech. We can see that Ufa's going down. Kalfus is going down. Ufa does have redemption. Sure, they'll be back up soon. To Wit is now going to try to slide out danger. And they are going to run for their life. Ufa has respawned. Murder is running after them. We see Riptide has been used. We have we don't have extra oomph. It is just the regular Upgrade it, because they did just go, um... Cannonball instead, at the level 20. Other things not, we do have Radiating Faith from Joanna. Speaking of which, Joanna getting relatively low has to pop the Iron Skin. Top off Stukov, and... Natural Toxin. Intensifying Toxin from Lunara. Speaking of Lunara, 
She did. And that's what I mean. Just like, if they're able to get on top of people. Oh, Uther's in danger. Uther just gave us warning things. He gets backs up. We all again see that. Maybe that D shield was meant to be for Uther. Diva just has a really big mech that gets in the way. So, probably what happened there is Uther tried to D shield himself. But this is why you just hit the alt button. And then the button you want to use. So, just alt. Then you click R. And suddenly, oh look, D shield on yourself. No risk of accidentally clicking on someone. Because lead has used redemption. They won't be able to get redeemed anytime soon. It's a three minute cooldown from what I believe. We can see that B Fresh is in danger. Lead as well. Lead just dropping out. We do see the W going back out of him. ETC does slide on to Stixer. And will be actually getting relatively low. Cleanse being used by Lead. Not quite wanting to lose their cow to any unnecessary stuns per se. But Joe doesn't quite have her Blessed Shield yet. Speaking about Joe. Joe is actually now out of position. And that will be them going down. This is a comp. Sorry. Not this. Zildjian Distillery has a composition you really don't want to be out of position for. Regent Nebula need to be in position for their comp to work. But Zildjian Distillery wants you to be a little bit loose on it. And that's what happened there. Diva Bomb split the co split the team. And they were able to get the advantage off of it. Thing to know is that Uth is actually just halved. So if Regent Nebula were to push in now, they would be able to get a good clean fight. Especially because IT Cowboy is still in essence a tank. He has gone that definitely more tanky build. But no, at this point, Lead is now back. Objective of Mortar Punisher goes over to the side of Zildjian Distillery. And we see Mosh coming out. That, However, that Mo Mosh, while not full amount, was just enough. And we do see the... I thought it was about to leave lane. But we did see uh, Stuka go down, Lunara then chased into Narnia. And she'll be down not long after. Ankle Shot starting this object, uh, not this objective, this camp while they're there. Just slowly beating it up. Oh, to Wit goes for a little bit of a cheeky slide going on. Oh, maybe you can get a Stixer over here. However, Stixer not found. And they will be able just to play safely just poking with their cannonballs. Good jump by this by the Punisher. However, as jump came out, you could hear the Blessed Shield. However, slide, stun, minigun, dead. We've, we're just having this kind of repeating cycle of households and distillery get their kills. And the thing is, it works. It's essentially what, uh, it's just your block compass by another name. Instead of Taunt Varian or anything like that, we just have a crowd surfing ETC. Sticks are going out back into their core. We can see IT Cowboys respawned. Stukov isn't too far off after. However, that is a stun coming out, oh my gosh. Okay, so I think Blaze may have been able to push your buttons for zero seconds after that. Um, <laughs> well, they were able to push your buttons, they just weren't able to use them for about zero seconds after that Punisher jumped on them. And that is the game. And the series going over the side of Zul'jin Distillery. GG scored by both sides. Well played. Right, so let's have a look at the game. Summary screen once I get my right arm to do everything. That's not right. It. That one's what I'm looking for. Do I have something tonight? Don't tell me I have something I have to do tonight. No, it's next week. Cool. Right, let's cut on over. Go back here. Tab. Stats. There we go. Tab stats. Right. So, uh, definitely, I, it still ended up pretty close all considering. But I think what happened is just Zildjian Distillery had such a comp where they can create one or two picks that led them kind of snowball it. And you can see that it did snowball a fair amount of times as one or two ca heroes went down for the side of Region Nebula. However, Region Nebula, when their fights happened, they typically found more. And that is because, as I said, their style of comp wants that objective fight. They need to be on objective fight early. And the time that Zildjian Distillery was the t what were on the on objective first, they handily won those fights. But when Regen Nebula did, they won those. But that does just... Sometimes that is just how it happens. Sometimes that is how it breaks down. And there's not too much that you can do about it. But there still was a lot of heart in that game. You can see Regen Nebula and Zildjian Distillery both fighting heavily. But in the end, it did go over to Zildjian Distillery. So let's have a quick look at talents. Anything to note here? Uh. So do you unfortunately not finish this time? Actually, Tigers didn't quite get there either. Be Ankle Shot had 45 gems, not gems, globes on their mana shield. So they weren't, so they really did, as I say, they weren't dying in time. So they re had that really big, oh no button. And they just won shield. I'm safe. Cool. Leave me alone. 
But do I as I say every game like I see Ufa, I'm like, man, I love Ufa. I'm happy when Ufa wins. But I do usually want to see a free map series, so Sojin sorry, you could just give him one to Region Nebula, like, come on. <laughs> but no. It was a good fun series. Pretty even across the board, just in the end of the day. Sojin to Silly had the slight edge with how kind of the comps went down. But both teams can hold the head high coming out of a series as it was a fun series to cast. It was a fun series to hopefully it was a fun series for you guys to watch. But that is all she wrote there. So right, let me throw it on over to the map view screen. As we can see, it was a 2-0 for the side of Zildjian Distillery. First map, Tomb of Spider Queen. Very even kills, very even structures. 60% on Zildjian Distillery's core, but they managed to get 100% on the core of Region Nebula. 100% off of the core of Region Nebula, so they barely took that out. And then, this last game, we saw, we saw how that one went down. A little bit more in favour of the side of Zildjian Distillery, but still very close all in all. But right, that has been it for me today. I've got a few things to do and may, fingers crossed, this is kind of a test run, I may do a live cast this afternoon. So there may be something to look forward to there because I have not done one in like, I'm looking at the time like this or like, I'm looking at the calendar, looking at the clock. Like, yeah, hmm. like it's been maybe two seasons since I've done a live cast just because it's usually working during the time. But if I'm not able to work currently, which I'm not, I can at least try and see if I can do this. But this worked out well. But to everyone who joined, Silver Bell Rocker, DeWitt, I hope you all, or everyone, has a good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending where around the world, because time zones are weird, and I'll see you all in the Nexus. Goodbye for now.